Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance, and I appreciate you joining us. And you've caught me in the Fishful shop right now because it's our season of in-depth where we look at some of our most commented on or most emailed about or most questioned shows that we've done and we talk about the details of how that show came together, the behind the scenes stuff, maybe the funny stuff, maybe something that was the most relevant to that day's catching, something along those lines. So in this episode of Fishful Thinker In-Depth, we're gonna talk about one of the most questioned shows we've ever done. And it was a show we did on one of the I-80 ponds in Nebraska. It included bass, catfish, and panfish, bluegills and crappie both. Uh, we got bond with emails about it, so we're here to give you the in-depth, all the details and all the behind the scenes. So stay tuned, get comfortable, it's going to be a fun show. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. That show was originally called Hit the Highway. And the reason we called that show Hit the Highway is because that's literally what we did. We got a brochure uh, from the state of Nebraska that said what was uh, in the ponds, how you got to the ponds, because some of them, even though you can see them from the highway, require a circuitous route to get to them. Uh, we picked one that had the same stats as the rest of them, and we went and fished. and and. A bunch of you thought it was about a magic pond and we got so many emails about it. Well, that pond was West Gothenburg. It's about 15 acres. It's a wildlife management area. There's also a Gothenburg, so don't get them confused if you want to go to the one we went to. The thing about the I-80 ponds is there's like 50 of them. When we decided we were going to do that because we'd had lots of emails, we were trying to decide how are we going to pick which one to fish. And so we basically threw darts, and for lack of a better way to put it, I did look at Google Earth a little bit and, uh, and looked at what some of the cover around the lake might look like. Um, but other than that, there was no stats on it. We knew it had largemouth, we knew it had cra uh, crappie, we knew it had uh, bluegills, we knew there's a sort of catfish in those and the rest of there as well. But we really didn't know what we were getting into, and, and that's really important because it really speaks to the guts of this show. And that is, and we preach this a lot, fish with an open mind. Just because I don't know anything about the pond or, or whatever doesn't mean I'm going to pigeonhole myself or get closed-minded about it. I went there thinking, well, this looks like a great little bass pond. And we fished around for a while. And, you know, we caught quite a few bass, um, little guys though, no real big ones. And it really wasn't what I was hoping to generate from our day. The reason we stopped at this particular pond is, in my, there's one, in my research, uh, it looked like that the bigger than average largemouth were in this lake compared to some of the others. So we stopped here and actually this is a little tiny largemouth right here. Look at this little feller. So that's not exactly as big as we're hoping for, but he just thumped it and we'll take him. All right, there we go, a little offshore. That one had me there for a minute. I didn't think he actually got the bait. He's offshore little brush pile right here. And uh, there you go. You're like told we expected these guys to be post spawn in here, and I think that will qualify right there. Look how skinny that fish is. Big old head and a little skinny body on that one. Okay, well, <laughs> we definitely found a way to catch fish. We just hadn't found any real big ones just yet. So there's the. We've now been bit on a digger. We've been bit twice on a Havoc smash tube and twice on a digger. Little guy right here. The whole time we were fishing for those bass, I kept looking at crappies and bluegills that were up shallow and you could see them. And with my coasters on, you could see clear as day all the fish. And so it was one of those things like, well, we can fight this. We can keep trying to catch largemouth, which weren't really playing. Or we could run back over to the tundra because it's only a 15 acre lake. And so even in the little green boat, we can run back over to the tundra, grab another rod. If you look right here underneath this big tree, a bunch of big crappies hanging underneath there. Chuck's right there. And that's what we did. And I ultimately grabbed a, a couple of panfish rods and a little box of some smaller baits that we always have with us in case we run into this type of a scenario. And then we went and fished for them. And what happened when we did that was the amount of giggles per minute of fishing went through the roof. Uh, at the end of the day, I think I was tired from laughing. We had so much fun between camera guy Tim Farnsworth and I uh, just beating up on these panfish. And the bluegills and the crappies were both biting well, and it became addicting. There it goes. 
Got him. <laughs> Before this is all over with, this is gonna be fun. Come on up in here. <laughs> this is a good little crappie hole and I have a good little crappie pattern figured out. <laughs> you just see the line go, and just take off. Here he comes. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> that is good fun. Come here, buddy. <laughs> so uh, there's another one. Looks a lot like a lot of the others. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. It got so addicting to the point where finally camera guy Tim's like, okay, man, we get the point. You can catch crappies one after the other. It's time to catch some other stuff. And that's only because in a 22 minute TV show, we can only show you so many crappies, but rest assured, we caught a lot of crappies and a lot of bluegills that day. And I think we fished a total of about four hours and caught a pile of both species of fish. Look at that thing. That's a slob, guys. That's a beautiful bluegill. We're gonna put him back. Some of them were bigger than others. Some of them were smaller, as you might expect. The only consistency we found was that the absolute biggest ones were the farthest from the bank. So if we found a, a big tree that stuck way out into the lake, there'd be crappies underneath that that was laying down. Another tree, another crappie. You guys wonder why I can call my shots. I can see those guys hanging under the tree down there. <laughs> he clobbered it, dude. And so all I gotta do is throw it past him, and then when it gets right to him, just drop it and let it swim its way to the bottom. And I threw back in the same tree, and I didn't even get the bale closed, and it got smoked again. <laughs> We found some standing timber that appeared that the state of Nebraska had dropped in the lake or, or offshore timber. Again, there was fish all around those as well. Some you could see, some you couldn't, but as soon as you put a bait in the water, it was pretty evident really quick whether or not they were there. Here we go, let's try these little guys. Got them. Ah! <laughs> all the smallest of the panfish that we caught were right up on the bank. And I think that speaks to the amount of danger involved with being right on the bank because the wading birds and everybody can reach them from the bank. But when you're hanging under a tree limb and you're out over five, six feet of water, the wading birds can't get you. And, uh, and that's a key part of it, I feel like, right there because that's how the biggest ones position themselves classically on that day. All right, guys, we've got these big stick ups coming off the bank. I'm gonna wait till I get out off of them just a touch so I can work them parallel. I have less chance of snagging them then and then trying to work up and over each one of them. So I'm gonna come like this. Oh, that was too quick and that was a bass. I don't want those guys right now. I'm trying to catch crappies. I can see the line take off and crappies just don't take off that fast. So you know it's a bass when that happens. Got that one, there's a crappie. <laughs> That's a good trick, guys. I'm just gonna throw that out real quick. That's a good trick. I, I just, I don't know, that little power grub. Uh, is just getting motored right now, guys. Look at that, perfect, right in the corner, right in the tip of his snout right there. Little tiny power grub. That's another beautiful fat little crappie. <laughs> now I'm thinking this little shady spot right over here. Can't see any of them over there, right there. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there's a better one there. Look at that one. There's a nice little crappie there. Uh-huh. <laughs> a little power grub. Perfect crappie. All right, you guys can see a big tree right there. Big tree starts way over there, comes clear over here. I can see there's a notch in the tree right there. So I'm gonna throw it up there by the notch in the tree and let it settle down and see if somebody's in there. And I don't want to get too close right away. If I can pick one off without snagging the tree, I think I'll be better off. Got him, there we go, just like that. That's why I pitched from way out there. <laughs> because when I get too close to these trees in this clear water, a lot of them will spook. I'd like to dab them vertically, but what I figured out when I get close enough to the tree, they spook. So I made a cast from a little farther from the tree and then you don't have to worry about that. And that's a perfect hook set right in the stout. And that's another one that looks suspiciously like the others. And there's the tree right there. There's your cover. So the key is staying back off the tree so they don't see you in the boat. And then an extremely subtle presentation with that little grub sinking down. You can see he's got it. 
See that? He had it the whole time. <laughs> that's a slob, too. Look at this one. That's a nice crappie. That might be our biggest one yet. In fact, I know that's our biggest one yet. Look at this one, guys. This is a big old crappie right here. Come here, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Look at the size of that crappie. <laughs> and I think he wanted my little power grab right there. That's awesome, guys. That's awesome. You know what? Uh, I just don't know that it's going to get any better than that for crappie. So what I think we're going to do is put the crappie baits down and go see about catching us a bluegill right now. And that's an absolutely beautiful fish. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Lorance. Find, navigate, dominate. Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. The bluegills on that show, on the other hand, were a little trickier to get to bite, believe it or not. And it's it's not something I generally associate as hard to get to bite in bluegills in the same sentence. But bluegills are really sensitive about size of the baits you throw. And we threw a whole bunch of little tiny jigs that day for them. We caught all of them on jigs, crappies and bluegills. Uh, the, the, the big thing about them is the bluegills wanted something even smaller than the crappies. And, and that's not terribly surprising given the size of the mouth of the two species of fish. Crappies got a much bigger mouth. Um, but the bluegills on some, a little tiny, little tiny bait coming through the water column horizontally, they would come and get it. You could put it right in front of them, they would get it. Uh, you could jig it in front of them and sometimes they would get it. But at the end of the day, it was more about the size of the bait. Yeah, this is a big old bluegill right here. Look at this one. He's way more aggressive than the crappie. Look at this, guys. How about that for a bluegill? <laughs> Look at the rosy belly on that fish. What a beautiful bluegill that is, guys, huh? That'll work, don't you think? Ooh, big old bull head on him. Okay, now for the bluegills, we shouldn't have to focus on the trees so much. They've been all along the bank here, just like this one. And that was a good call. That's my third cast with the little tiny beetle grub. And look at the size of that bluegill. <laughs> look how much feistier he is than a crappie, too. I've said forever, if bluegill's got five pounds, I'd chase him forever. There, uh, that's a fantastic looking little bluegill. Look at this bluegill. How fat and how rosy is that little bluegill? Look at the size of that bluegill, guys. That's a nice bluegill. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. With the crappies, it was more about that sudden little drop. And if you made that, if that bait was dropping straight down the water column or that sudden little drop, one of those two would get you bites almost every time. Okay, now the key is don't overwork it. So it's a little tiny grub, little tiny jig head. So I'm gonna let it go all the way down and just barely move it. I mean, you don't, it doesn't take much at all to get that thing to swim. There he is. Got him. Oh, I had him. <laughs> Got him that time. <laughs> and that's why you carry light tackle in the boat with you all the time, because there's another one. <laughs> oh, that's two bites on one cast. I think I'm up to, what, about eight casts and seven or six or seven bites. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's going to sink down. Watch the line. There goes the line, watch the line. Jig's going down, no bites, no bites. Okay, got him there, yeah, right when I picked it up, right when I picked it up, that's beautiful. The jig got to the bottom, I picked it up off the bottom, and there's your crappie. <laughs> Every one of those horizontal trees, if you throw, make a good throw parallel down one of those trunks and watch your line close, you are rewarded with yet another beautiful crappie. The biggest key to getting those crappies to bite and this is a huge key and we talked about it a bunch on the show but we still got a lot of emails about it we dabbed the fish and we learned it from charlie bunting on a show we filmed years prior charlie bunting at that time went on to be the national crappie fishing champion so he's very good at catching crappies and he made me look silly catching crappies one day in the boat because he had one little nuance that we didn't that i didn't understand in the boat because i hadn't fished for crappies my whole life like he had Long story short, the little tiny crappie baits, when we caught them on a few different baits, little one inch power grubs and a few other things, 
hold the bait right above the fish. You can see them. Hold it and don't move it. Just hold it right above them. And when the crappies come up and look, and they just look at it, and they look, and you're not moving it at all. And you're not, I mean, just absolutely dead stick it. Don't do anything with it. And then when they get real close to it, just barely drop the rod one inch. I mean, just boop, tiny little drop. Pow, they'd bite that thing right on cue every time. And once you get that trick figured out, it's such a good bite trigger, such a good reaction that you get out of the fish that it becomes addicting. Got him. Oh, that's money. That is so money. And look at the size of him. That is so money. That is so. Thank you, Charlie Bunting. Did you guys see that? That fish was looking, looking, looking. I did the little drop move I learned from Charlie. And look at this slab. Come here. Open your mouth. <laughs> Look at that crappie, guys. That's a slab right there, guys. That's a big one. I mean, if you look at that. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Most people would fry you up, dude. So it's your lucky day that it was me that caught you. Uh, you can see the bait just hanging right above him. And he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. I just dropped the rod tip just a little, boop, let the bait drop that far suddenly, and it just disappeared. I didn't really see his mouth. I just saw that my little white grub disappeared, and I set the hook. That is money. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. I don't care if it's tricking a fish with a dry fly or a, a whatever, whatever it is. You can trick them. That's what gets me going, and that's a good trick. Thank you, Mr. Bunting. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Berkeley, your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. We ended up throwing a combination of a couple different crankbaits and some pitch baits to get those fish to bite. Now this show was filmed several years ago. Some of those baits aren't even in production, but if I was going back today, I would be throwing the little Berkeley square bull uh, hard to beat the little square build crankbait like that. I would probably be winding that rate, that bait and I would be doing it at a high rate of speed. That would be key because of the clear water. The pitch baits, for me, I'm married to a pit boss at this point. I think we threw, if I'm not mistaken, a Havoc uh, tube, a big tube jig on that show. Um, I think the pit boss would, would have got us as many or more bites. It was not available at that time. Um, but I believe that that would have been a better bait for getting bites out of them, a more compact bait for getting uh, bites out of those bass. It would sink fast, although the smash tube sinks very fast, it's a bigger, bulkier bait than is the uh, pit boss. The bass that we ended up catching that had size to them were also off the bank and uh, in deep, out on the end off the trees, out way off the end of trees. Uh, State of Nebraska had cut a bunch of trees and let them fall in the lake, but they don't, they leave them connected at the base so they stay where they are. And that's a great way, by the way, to increase the carrying capacity of any given lake or increase the, the amount of cover available to your fish. The biggest bass that we caught were also out off the end of that stuff, not up on the shallow end of it like you might expect. And again, I think that's the water clarity. Uh, with water being that clear, the fish just really like to be offshore a little bit, if at all possible. It's a little safer for them. They've got more water all around them. And I, I think that that had a lot to do with the, the fish that we did catch. We didn't catch any giants that day, but we caught a couple of respectful ones that, that would make it you know, a worthwhile day if you're driving down the highway to stop in there. I mean, to be honest with you guys, I would stop in there just to fish for crappies and forget there was largemouth in there at all. But you guys love largemouth bass, and we get that a lot. So I felt like since we declared in the beginning we were going to catch one, we had to somehow figure out how to get a couple of them to bite bigger than the eight or ten inches that we'd caught a bunch of. Finally, we got us a big one. He is underneath that log right there. There we go, guys. That's why we came out here bass fishing. We knew we'd find one if we messed around long enough. Now, I've fished that same tree. Easy, buddy. <laughs> he got my Havoc smash tube. Look at that. Come here, fish. Easy. Oh. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's a beautiful bass right there. How about that? We're going to go ahead and get him put back real quick right here in the beautiful sun. Look at that fish. A surprise bonus catch that day for us uh, was a catfish. Uh, ironically, the catfish was dirt shallow right on the bank and almost right in front of the tundra. The lake being only 15 acres, we just kept doing laps around the lake. And by the time you got back to where you were before, the fish had re repositioned and were ready to go. And so by being able to do those laps around, it was easy peasy. Well, ironically, I had pitched to that same little spot a couple of times. It looked like a good spot. 
on various laps coming around the lake. And then sure enough, I pitch in there one more time and, uh, and get a catfish to bite it. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just told the camera guy one second ago, this is my latch pitch. Look right, there's my truck. I want the camera to look right, there's my truck. I told the camera guy, this is my last pitch. So we weren't fishing for catfish. I'd love to tell you that was my great catfishing skill that caught that catfish, but it was not. It was being persistent about throwing in a good spot. And if you're an ambush feeder, and a channel cat is an ambush feeder, make no mistake, then yeah, sitting on a good spot's a good place. It could have just as easily had a largemouth bass sitting there. If there was pike in there, it was the kind of place a pike would have sat. But I expected a large predator might be sitting there. I just didn't expect it was gonna be a beautiful, dark-colored channel cat. How about them apples, guys? <laughs> Beautiful channel cat. You got a big old Fusion 19 hook right there in his jaw. Come out of there. I got him, too. That hook got him. There's my Havoc smash tube, and there's my channel cat, guys. And that's as good a way as any to end a show. I don't know that we can get any more unique than that. You can probably hear him. You hear him on my microphone. How about that, guys? That's a cool fish. That's as good a place as any to end our show. And he's a cool looking catfish, and we love all fish equally. I'm gonna put him back here, let him get his act back together. We took quick still frame up and catfish are pretty durable and get my smash tube up and out of there. I don't think many people think of tube jigs as catfish baits, but I've said it a million times, tube jigs are as multi-species as they get. So there you have it, one pond on the side of I-80, 15 acres of sheer bliss, West Gothenburg, wildlife management area did not disappoint. We picked it randomly, as I said. Uh, we fished to the conditions. We fished with an open mind as far as species, and we had a fantastic morning in the boat. We hope you guys enjoyed that show. If you'd like to join the conversation on social media, that's at Fishful Thinker across all platforms, uh, including YouTube, and there's more than 300 videos there. We'd really love it if you'd check that out, subscribe possibly while you're there. Most importantly, we hope you'll tune in, and we'll see you next week. Look at the size of that crappie. Here he comes. Got him. Oh, that's money. That is so money. Look at the size of it. <laughs> My hair sticking out. Let me guess. Got one, two, three. Oh, he came off. No, no, no. Got him. Oh, I had him. Got that. Oh, I missed him. Okay. Oh, he's on it. He's, he's chewing on it. Got him. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was ugly. Hit the water. Blue Bluegill came up and grabbed it. Oh, no. I didn't get him. I got the tree. Cut. Cut. Cut for a second. Cut.